Let's review the process for how a bill becomes a law in the state of New Hampshire. We will point out where there are specific opportunities for advocacy in this process. Any representative or senator may sponsor a bill. To do so, they file a legislative service request. This process occurs during the fall prior to the legislative session. Next, the bill is released with full text. This occurs during late December and early January. If the bill sponsor is a representative, the bill starts the process in the House of Representatives and becomes a House bill, HB. If the sponsor is a senator, the bill starts in the Senate and becomes a Senate bill, SB. The bill will then be assigned a number. It is referred to as HB or SB with the number moving forward. For the purpose of this video, we will follow with the example of HB 10 moving through the legislative process. Since our theoretical HB 10 is sponsored by a representative, it will start the process in the House. It is now assigned to a House committee based on the bill's topic. Committees have different focuses, such as the Education Committee or the Health and Human Services Committee. Lists of all the committees in the House and Senate can be found on the General Court website. Committees are tasked with studying the bill more in depth. The committee will then hold a public hearing for HB 10. Every bill gets a public hearing in New Hampshire. This is the first important opportunity for advocacy in the legislative process, and we highly recommend participating in some way. You can participate by giving oral testimony, submitting written testimony, signing in online in support or opposition, or showing up and signing in in person. After the public hearing, there is an executive session where the committee deliberates and votes on HB 10. The public may observe the executive session. The committee votes on a recommendation for how the full house should proceed with the bill. There are a few different options they can vote to recommend, such as ought to pass, inexpedient to legislate, or retain in committee. Next, HB 10 moves out of committee and goes to the house for a full body vote. This is where all 400 representatives vote on whether they should accept the committee recommendation. This is an important time to call your state representative and advocate for why they should vote in support or opposition to the bill. Sometimes a bill is sent to a second committee. This often happens if the bill has a fiscal note or FN attached to it, meaning there is a financial component to the bill. If HB 10 passes the House, it is sent to the Senate and the same process repeats. This is called crossover and occurs around March. Now HB 10 is assigned to a Senate committee. The Senate committee holds a public hearing. It is just as important to show up in some way for the second public hearing as it is for the first one. This is for an entirely different audience than the first public hearing. There will be an executive session on HB 10 and they will vote on a recommendation for how they think the full Senate should vote. HB 10 will then go to the Senate floor for a full body vote. This is an important time to call your state Senator and ask them to vote in support or opposition to HB 10. Sometimes a bill might have to go to a committee of conference. Let's say the Senate added an amendment to the bill. This would mean that the Senate has passed a different version of the bill than the House passed. Sometimes the House committee will simply approve the amendment change. If not, then a committee of conference is formed. A committee of conference is when a few members of the House committee and a few members of the Senate committee form a new committee whose job is to figure out a compromise between the two versions of the bill. If every legislator on the committee of conference does not agree with a compromise, the bill dies. This is why it's important to contact committee of conference members with your advocacy message. Now, HB 10 has passed both the House and the Senate, so it moves on to the governor. The governor has three choices. They can sign the bill into law, they can veto the bill, or they can do nothing and the bill becomes law after five days without a signature. You can call the governor's office and advocate for them to sign or veto a bill. Let's say HB 10 was signed into law. Yay, your hard work has paid off. Had the governor vetoed the bill, there is still the chance it might become law. Vetoes may be overridden by a two-third majority vote in both houses. The process for a bill to become law is long, but we are here to help you navigate it and assist you with your advocacy. If you have further questions, please reach out to new features.